Vito. Leaping down upon the underworld to smash gangland comes the mysterious, all-powerful character who is a problem to the police, but a crusader for law. In reality, Dan Garrett, a rookie patrolman, loved by everyone, but suspected by none of being the Blue Beetle. As the Blue Beetle, he hides behind a strange mask and a suit of impenetrable blue chain armor, flexible as silk, but stronger than steel. Today's episode of the Fox feature, The Blue Beetle, is entitled, The Underworld Goes Underground. Rival construction companies submitted low bids for digging a tunnel under Eastern Valley River from York City to Paradise Island. The Dunlap Construction Company was awarded the contract. Many citizens and some of the newspapers believe young Reginald Dunlap's engagement to the daughter of Commissioner of Public Works Morrison was the main reason he got the contract for his company. Since work started on the tunnel, more than the average number of accidents have occurred in the workings. Strong pressure has been brought to bear on Commissioner Morrison by politicians and newspapers to cancel Dunlap's contract and give it to the Jenkins Company. During previous and less honest administrations, the Jenkins Company had a virtual monopoly on all city construction work. As our story opens, Patrolman Dan Garrett, who is really the Blue Beetle, is discussing the matter with his friend and confidant, Dr. Franz. I'm convinced, Doc, that there's dirty work going on at the tunnel. Well, what makes you so certain? The past record of the Dunlap Company, for one thing. Before this tunnel job, they enjoyed the reputation of having fewer casualties on their jobs than any other construction company in the country. But this is a very difficult and hazardous job. It is. But the Dunlap people have had other jobs just as hazardous. Yes, that's true. I went to college with young Dunlap, and I know he's a capable fellow. When the old man died recently, Reggie took over the business. He's done a good job with it so far. Well, what's causing all these accidents and so many men getting the bend? I don't know. But I'll bet some group is trying to undermine Reggie. It's a ticklish situation for the commissioner. Yes, I can see it is. He wants to favor his prospective son-in-law, yet he can't disregard the dangerous situation that exists. Uh, excuse me, Danny. Uh, there's someone out front in the store. Yeah, it's only me, Doc. Why, hello, Mike. Hello. Come on back in the laboratory. Uh, Danny's here. Hello, Mike. Uh, hello, Danny. I was looking for you. There, there's trouble over at the Mid-City Tunnel, and we've been assigned to investigate. Okay, I'll be right with you. Anybody hurt, Manigan? Yeah, yeah I think Mr. Dunlap himself was hurt. Reggie Dunlap? Yeah, I think so. Well, oh, come on, Mike. Reggie's a friend of mine. So long, Doc. See you later. You looking for someone, officer? Yes, Mr. Reginald Dunlap. Well, my name is Stanley. I'm the night superintendent. Mr. Dunlap is in the airlock being decompressed. Can I see him? I'm afraid not. Not at the moment. What happened? Mr. Dunlap was down in the tunnel inspecting the work. Got word that his fiancée, Miss Morrison, had been thrown from a horse while riding in the city park. He immediately rushed to the service here without spending enough time in the decompression chamber. He got a severe attack of the bench. Well, I'd like to see him. I'm a personal friend of his. In a half hour, perhaps. He's back in the decompression chamber. I see. Was uh, Miss Morrison hurt by the fall? A uh, broken arm, I believe. She's at City Hospital. Oh, thanks, Mr. Stanley. I'll take a run over there and drop back here in half an hour. Hey, uh, what's doing, Danny? Uh, drive me over to the City Hospital, Mike. Miss Morrison's been injured. Can't see Dunlap for half an hour. He's being treated for the bends. Oh, bends, is it? Uh, that's what them tunnel workers get, ain't it? Yes. Well, uh, what causes it, Danny? Well, in order to keep the rock and mud from falling in and crushing the tunnel workers, or sand hogs, as they're called, compressed air has to be forced into the tunnel until the air pressure against the sides and roof of the tunnel is as great as the pressure of the riverbed and water above the tunnel. Yeah, and I can understand that, but... Pressure may vary from 40 to 60 pounds to the square inch. Oh, that must be tough on those sand hogs. It is. Normal atmospheric pressure at sea level is only 15 pounds to the square inch, and that's what the human body's accustomed to. Well, go on. When the men go on the job, they spend a certain amount of time in a compression chamber called an airlock. While in the airlock... The air pressure is gradually increased to a point where it equals the pressure in the tunnel. The men are then able to pass directly into the tunnel. I see. It sort of conditions them, huh? That's right. Well, uh, what about when they come out? Well, that takes longer. If the men aren't properly decompressed before they come out into normal atmosphere... 
uh, air pressure, paralysis, and even death may result. Well, uh, here we are at the hospital, Danny. Good. Wait for me, Mike. I'll only be a few minutes. Okay. But if you see any good-looking nurses, just tell them that Mike Madigan has a car of his own. <laughs> Uh, you'll find Miss Morrison in that room right there. Thank you, nurse. Come in. Yes? Oh, what is it, officer? Has something happened to Mr. Dunlap? Now, don't worry, Miss Morrison. Nothing serious has happened. I happen to be an old college mate of Reggie's, and I heard you were here. Oh. I wanted to ask you a few questions about your accident. Will you help me? Why, of course I will. I'll do everything I can to help Reggie. Well, now, tell me what happened to you. Well, I was riding along the bridle path in City Park when suddenly a man dashed out from behind some bushes, waving his hands and shouting. My horse shied and started to run away. I stepped off my saddle and fell. That's all I know until I came to, here in the hospital, with a broken arm. Well, now tell me, do you often take that same ride and at the same time? Why, well, yes. Almost every day if the weather is clear. Why? Oh, nothing. Well, I've got to hurry back and see Reggie, Miss Morrison. Now, don't you worry any more. Just take it easy and let that arm of yours set. I'm going to find the answer to these mysterious accidents. Well, Danny, what are you going to do with those old clothes? Put them on over my blue beetle chain armor. Going to a party disguised as a disguise? <laughs> no, Doc. You see before you, Patrolman Dan Garrett, alias the Blue Beetle, alias a sand hog in the mid-city tunnel job. Aren't you afraid you'll be discovered? I'll have to take that chance. Uh, what did you learn today? Oh, many things, Doc. I learned from Reggie, when I could talk with him, that he's not altogether satisfied with this new nighttime superintendent he has. You mean Stanley? Yes. Stanley's an experienced man, isn't he? Yes, and he came recommended by a friend of Miss Morrison. Uh, what about Miss Morrison's accident? I think that was planned with the hope that... Reggie would come rushing up out of the tunnel as soon as he got the news. And be incapacitated by an attack of the bend. Yes. Well, what are you going to do? Go to work as a sand hog. Keep my ears and eyes open. But your identity. Does Dunlap know you're doing this? He asked me to help him solve this case. I told him it might prove embarrassing for his future father-in-law if word got around that a member of the city police force was working as a special investigator for the Dunlap company. So? So I told him I was very close to the Blue Beetle. And well, I was sure I could persuade him to take the case. <laughs> Very ingenious. <laughs> Reggie got me a union card and a note to Stanley. I'm to start work tonight. Anything you need, Danny? This is going to be dangerous work. I'd like a shot of your secret 2X formula. It may prove useful if I get into any trouble underground. Uh, you shall have it. Anything else? Not tonight. Well, so long, Doc. The Blue Beetle will crawl underground tonight instead of fly. But his nippers will be just as sharp. <laughs> You're new on this job, ain't you? Yeah. You one of Stanley's men? I was hired by Mr. Dunlap. Oh. What difference does it make? Plenty. The men Stanley's hired are out for no good. They're troublemakers. What do you mean? I've worked with some of them before. They're always brought in when somebody wants to slow up a job. They're nothing more than gangsters. Who hired you? Young Dunlap's old man. What about all these accidents, blowouts, and cave-ins? And there so he is Uh-uh. Look out. Trouble ahead. Don't let them get you into a fight. They'll kill you. Let them try it. He's a spy. That new guy's a spy of the many. Yeah, let's get him off of this job. Burke, too. Yeah, let's get them both. Hey, you. What's your name? Slud, do you? Oh, yeah? Well, Slud, do you? How do you like that? Swell, how do you like that? Oh, get him, Joe. Get him with that pickaxe. Wait till I finish work here. Oh, yeah, that will be oh, never mug. How do you like them potatoes? <laughs> Ready, fellas, come on. There's the first. Come on, let's get in it. Hey, look. That guy's hat fell off. He's got a blue steel hood on his head. Why, it's the blue beetle. The blue, the blue beetle. beetle. Yes, the blue beetle. And he's going to burn you with his magic ray. No, no, not in here. You'll blow us all the kingdom come to that what thing. What goes on here? And the boss. Him. Who is this man in the strange mask? It's the blue beetle. The blue beetle. Who sent you here? Blue beetle flies wherever crime and crooks congregate. Well, there are no crooks here. He was snooping around with Burke there, boys. Burke? Yeah. Go up to the office. Get your money. Take this blue beetle with you. Oh, now, listen, Mr. Stanley. I Get in the compression chamber there. Okay. You too, blue beetle. Don't let me see your masquerading face around here again. I have a feeling you and I will meet again, Mr. Stanley. 
after the Blue Beetle finishes his investigation. Shut the door, baby. Gee, boys. Do you think he's wise to you? Uh, don't worry. When he gets out of that compression chamber, neither he nor Burke will ever be able to tell what they know or suspect. You've never had the bends, Blue Beetle, but you're going to have them now, permanently. What will happen to the Blue Beetle in the compression chamber in the tunnel beneath the Great River? Will Stanley's quick decompression of the air in the chamber kill or permanently paralyze the Blue Beetle? These questions will be answered in the next episode of The Blue Beetle. copyrighted Fox feature, appearing in Mystery Men Comics Magazine and the Blue Beetle Magazine. The Blue Beetle is on the air twice a week on this same station. Consult the broadcast schedule in your local newspapers. And don't forget to listen in to The Blue Beetle.